by that's a table for map scale. Here is a depiction of where the coordinate uncertainties come from. So suppose this is what is written in Samuel's catalog. There are coordinates to the nearest minute. There's no indicator in what is written that the collector was aware of seconds. And they certainly weren't recorded. So what we have here is some information that the collector was aware of latitude and longitude at least to the minute. And so the coordinate uncertainty comes from only having minutes and not having seconds or decimal seconds. So that contributes. It might be that this isn't from the collector. It might be from a gazetteer after the fact. You're looking in a book, trying to find the, the coordinates for a town. And the coordinates for the town are given to the nearest minute. So you're going to base your, your coordinates on that one, realizing that they only recorded it to the nearest minute also. So again, the coordinate uncertainty will contribute to the uncertainty in your georeference, but only one part of it. Another part is the map scale. If you have a very, very detailed map, then the uncertainty from the map will be less. If you have a very small scale map, in other words, it covers a big area, then it's not very detailed, and the uncertainty from the map scale will be bigger. And this is just a table that gives the values to be used for different scales of maps. And so the more detailed the map, the smaller the uncertainty, is all that's trying to say. Next, and often the most important contribution to the total uncertainty is the extent of the named place inside the description. So in our, our example, five miles north of Davis, Davis is a fairly sizable town. We don't know where in Davis the collector is referring to. It might be the post office, it might be the center of town, it might be the edge of the town where he left the town on the road. So any part of Davis is possible, which means the extent of Davis contributes greatly to the uncertainty. For any locality that's based on a town, this is almost always the biggest contribution. GPS accuracy, we talked about. Hopefully you can record that. And, ho and usually GPS accuracy is a small contribution. Even in the worst case scenario, when the government, my government, was making those signals worse than they had to be, it was roughly 100 meters of accuracy. So if you have GPS readings from before May 1st of, of the year 2000, you can apply 100 meters as the GPS accuracy to all of those. After the fact, accuracy got much better and varied, but if it wasn't recorded, you can still use a reasonable default value of 30 meters for GPS accuracy anytime after May 1st of the year 2000. This may not be the case in extreme conditions, but as a mean, as a usual good upper value, 30 meters is a default. Then we get into some of the details of the process of georeferencing, the actual methods used. And the first of those is imprecision in the direction measurements. This you can think of as the following. If I tell you I'm going north from Accra, what does that mean? Does that mean that I get my GPS or my compass and I face north and I start walking? Probably not. It means it's somewhere north. Now, we don't really know exactly what north means in this case, but what we do know, or a good assumption, is that it's not northeast and it's not northwest. Or maybe less, con or more conservatively, it's not east and it's not west, it's north. So it's somewhere between northeast and northwest. It's north, more or less. But if I have indications of direction 
that are based on northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, then I'm being a little bit more precise. Because I've demonstrated that I understand the concept of northeast, which means I'm distinguishing northeast from north, northeast from east. And so now if I tell you I'm going northeast, it means I'm not going north. I'm going somewhere between north, northeast, and east, northeast. And that's a smaller angle than the angle between north and east. Right? This is north and east. This is east, northeast, and north, northeast. It's half the size of the angle. So it's more specific. The imprecision is less. And the uncertainty because of it is less. Now, it's just an accident of how the data were recorded and my ability to interpret it. Somewhat similarly is an imprecision in the distance measurements. If my beloved collector always wrote distances to the nearest kilometer, then it, he or she is only being precise to one kilometer. He or she is not distinguishing between 1.1 kilometers and 0.9 kilometers. At least they're not telling me so. However, if the collector records something like 1.1 kilometers, then we know they're aware of tenths of kilometers. So they're being precise to the nearest 100 meters. They're writing it down. But if they don't write it down, if they only give me the nearest kilometer all the time, then I can't make an assumption that they knew the distinction between one kilometer and 100 meters. And I have to use one kilometer as the source of uncertainty in distance. So, all this tells you that how localities are written makes a big difference in your ability to georeference them with a small uncertainty. And you can see there are plenty of things that contribute here. Now, one thing I skipped in the middle was an unknown datum. So now I want to describe what this graphic means. You have a GPS. It is a fabulous tool. If it's used correctly, it can give you locations on the surface of the Earth to within four meters. That's not bad. If you use it improperly, all of that accuracy will be thrown out the window. How do you use it improperly? You don't know what datum it's using. Remember some slides back, we talked about datums and how they're representations of the surface of the Earth and that there are more than 200 of them on the planet? Well, there wouldn't be more than 200 if they were all the same or if they were all similar. They're not. They're not similar at all, in fact. The worst case scenario is if I take my GPS in one particular datum and I take a coordinate, now I change my datum on my GPS to the worst possible alternative, on a particular place on the Earth, the worst case scenario ever is that I will be three and a half kilometers from where I should be. That's how much these two datums differ from each other. Now, the likelihood that you're in that scenario is pretty small because those examples are one datum in Ireland and another datum in the South Pacific. But the point is the same. Now, the difference between WGS84, which is the most commonly used datum, and the worst case scenario for all those other datums is more than a kilometer. So even using WGS84 as one possibility, you can be a kilometer off if you don't know. So it's probably a good thing that the GPS tells you what datum it is in. When we do the five-day course, one of the GPS exercises is to show this effect. So what we'll do is we have all the GPSs armed with a particular coordinate in a particular datum and all the groups go to that spot and they say, okay, here I am. And then they switch the datum and the GPS and go to the same exact coordinates. 
and they end up walking 100 meters somewhere, over there or over there. And that shows very well what the, the effect is if you don't have <coughs> datum information. So this means if we don't record the datum information, we have to account for that possibility that you could be off by that amount. If you do record the datum information, the uncertainty from an unknown datum is zero. What does that tell you? Record the datum. It's that easy. Most GPSs come from the factory configured to be in WGS84, and most people don't know what a datum is, so the GPS stays that way. However, Sophisticated users want to use the GPS to match their printed map so that when they look on the map and look at the GPS, the coordinates relate to each other. They're the same. So they need to change the GPS to be in the datum of the map. Okay, good. So they match each other. But if the datum of the map is not WGS84, and most maps are not, then the coordinates that they write down and go into their field books, in their catalogs, and into the internet where everybody uses them, use a different datum from the WGS84, which means they're going to be, and for sure, going to be in the wrong place. And you don't know it. If they recorded the datum, then you know it. And you can put it back into WGS84 from its original datum. The point is, this information is extremely important. And the graphic here is just a map that what happens in the United States as a difference between two possible different datums. There's more than two, but this is just a comparison of two. One of them is WGS84, and another one is the most commonly used datum for maps in the United States. So in the darkest green portion, there's very little difference between zero and 25 meters. But the further away you go from there, in any direction, especially out in the edge of Alaska or in Hawaii, we're up into the half of a kilometer difference. So that makes a big difference when you're on a little boat paddling to the next Hawaiian island against the current. So keep that in mind. I think that might be the end of this presentation. So Delina, if you want to stop. Oh. Or wait for questions. Hang on. Are there any questions about any of the geographical or georeferencing concepts? Right now, we've just sort of introduced the vocabulary that you need, the concepts that you need. Any doubts about any of them? Yep. He's rubbing his hands together, which means he has a good one. <laughs> no. One that John can't answer. Uh, no, John. Come on. John, come on. Have an answer. Okay, my 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 question is on the map scale. Mm -hmm. At times, I always get confused when I see a map and so is uh, one is to ten thousand. Right. Then how how do I get the real coordinate map put in a GPS and down to this point? 